things that we need to talk about. Young people, first things first. Those little trash cans that's underneath your pews, those are not for water bottles, guys. Not only that, that's only solely for tissue and like little things like that. If you have water bottles, please, there's a, bottle, there's a little bit in the back, waste bin, dedicated for water bottles. Okay? Plus, you shouldn't really be drinking in here anyways. <laughs> Second, these keys were found in the nursery. You know who they are? They have like a little bow on it. There we go. See how it works. Butterfly. Anybody? Go once. Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to start our service here tonight. I believe God's going to be something great in our lives. Not just for the young people, but for those that came, visitors, volunteers, everyone. I love you guys. I love you guys a lot. Thank you for all those that have been helping us through this whole entire week. It's been a blast. It's been phenomenal. Yeah. I want you guys to thank Alice, Sister Alice, for cooking the food and all the work.
Yeah, what are we doing?
to be awaited in the balance. Is there an enemy that's a real enemy out there that's wanting to completely destroy you? Yeah. You know, might not even understand it. You might understand, oh, that's just fake. Let me tell you, it's a real thing. You can ask those ladies that's back there, it is a real thing that's out there to destroy your life. Hallelujah. I know we're going to be speaking tomorrow. Hallelujah. I'm telling you guys, young people, listen. We're here to warn you, but we're also here to tell you the truth.
worship on this platform. I don't know what y'all feel out there, but I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I was thinking today about John when he wrote the book of Revelation. John said I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And when he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, God gave him a revelation. Guess what? We're in the Spirit. We're in God's house. And I believe there's some young heart God wants to speak to tonight. <laughs> I believe there's a word that God wants to do in the life of a teenager, of a, of a child, even in adult and a parent. Listen, parents, I'm going to preach to you for a moment. I don't know who you are. And I don't know where you stand, but you've got a child down here who has an opportunity to get in touch with the God of heaven. And it's your responsibility to help me. And the ground is prepared tonight. <laughs> We're ready. And I believe the Lord is ready. But he said, draw nigh unto me. And I will draw nigh unto He's here. He's here. And if you need something, tonight is your night. I said, tonight is your night. No more sitting back. No more you look at it. No more waiting.
if you're able, slip up your hands and worship Him. Everybody, 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 come on, worship Him, worship Him. He's moved, He's blessed, He's touched, now you thank Him for it. He's worked in this order, now you thank Him for it. Thank the kind Spirit, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. from the Lord it's not your it is not God's fault right. ain't the preacher's fault ain't, ain't anybody's fault Amen. it's your fault Amen. because how could you not receive from the Lord in an atmosphere like what we have in this place right now I remember last year, brother, I'm going to hand it over to Brother Z, but I remember last year the best service was the last one. Well, this is the second to last one. So maybe as the years go by, the best service will keep moving its way forward and forward and forward. Before long, every service of the week will be a Holy Ghost service. Y'all must not be that some here tonight that came to the altars and really got a touch from God and God blessed you God spoke to you, God did a work in your life but tomorrow night he's going to do it and he's going to take it a step further yes. Yes. preacher you're being bold I know who my God is yes. amen
But if we don't keep that light shining bright, there it is. Come on. Come on. We don't keep that light when we go to Walmart. We don't keep that light when we go to our job. Yes. We don't keep that light when we get around these young people and, and, and the opportunities that God gives us. I, yes. I don't go to JV team for a high school. And I thought, you know, it, it's brought young people in, into my life. And we, we pray with them. We talk to them about Jesus and we use it for a for an outreach for children that may never get an opportunity to hear about Jesus. We pray with them in a circle at the end of each practice and at the end of the games and before games. We pray with them. And we're constantly, me and my boys are constantly telling them we love them because we know there is a darkness out there. Phenomenal, one of the most popular kids in the whole high school. I thought, you know, uh, he a few years ago he contacted my son and said, I, I just need somebody to talk to. He got hooked on drugs, and I, I, I'm not going to take long. But he got hooked on drugs, and, 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 and his life got just tore apart. And I thought my son went and picked him up for three hours. My son tried to tell him, all you need is Jesus. All you need is the Lord. Yeah. And when he'd come to church, and he, he would pray at the altars, and he would seek God. And he, he told my son one night, he said, I got a needle stuck in my arm, and I'm afraid. You can just pray. I don't want to die. But I thought they found him dead this morning, and it had broke my heart. I thought no matter how Oh, listen to me. I, I'm telling you, young people, you think the popularity is the way to go. You think that all these things and having friends is the way to go. I'm going to tell you, son. The friends is going to lead you. Popularity is going to lead you. Fame is going to lead you. Money is going to lead you. Yes, sir. Yes, you're right. 
I've watched it creep in, brother. I've watched it creep into the church house. I've been a youth pastor for almost 15 years. I tell one young man, I said, look, son, God give you talent. I said, God give you anointing. I said, but the devil would love to take that anointing to Nashville and destroy you. And I watched just that very thing. As he got bitter and hard against the church. And he took the talent that God gave him and took it to Nashville. And now you can't even talk to him about God. Mm -hmm. If we're not careful, darkness. Yeah, my God, I'm so no, no, I'm telling you, yeah. if we're not careful, brother, see, he'll slip right in it. You can. We steal one right out from under his Hallelujah. I don't want to take away from what I'm going to say tomorrow. But I'm telling you, Jesus stood and he looked over Israel. Yes. And he said, oh, hallelujah. He began to weep. Yes. And he said, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. How often I would have gathered you together had the Hindu her room, but you would not. Yes. Because darkness had a blindness while the light was shining right in front of you. Yes. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost light was here tonight. Oh, and there were some young people that yeah. more worried about popularity and friends or romance or having a boyfriend or girlfriend oh, or playing yeah. a sport or having something that's materialistic in this world. I'm telling you, hell is real. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Hell is real. Oh, the world don't want us to preach it anymore. Uh, even the church world a lot don't want us to oh, preach it anymore. Yes. But I'm telling you, if we don't take a stand against the devil, he'll, he'll come in and break out in our homes and in our churches. Yes. You pray for me, church. I want to be one to stand yes. bold against the enemy. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Lord is done. Yes, Lord. 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 He spoke to me in these last few messages, and then I got to take I got to take a change in position. I got to take a change, and I have to leave it there. I have to burn it. I have to leave it there and keep it there forever. I have to go away from that and just be with God. I have to just do His will. Do what he has called me to do. Yeah, That's what I've been praying in my prayers yeah. for the for, for the the whole three three days, three nights. Oh. Help me, Lord. He's been putting me in the spirit ever since I came to camp, and I think I'm all that. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. It seems that it felt like Satan was trying to do something to me, make it feel like that I wasn't get, getting through enough for some reason, even though I was receiving it and not even realizing it sometimes. I was in a state of peace, and I almost couldn't see it. But he was just trying to say that God wasn't there at the time, and I, he was lying to me. It was when I started praying for someone else after I was in the spirit that I started receiving it even more. And I just want to thank God for that. Shadrach, Abednego, and you're going to be thrown into the fire den, yeah. right? Yeah. They're thrown in. They're tied up. They're thrown in. Verse 24 says, But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three yeah. men and throw them into the furnace? Yeah, yeah. Huh? And I love the reply because if it was me, I would be like in a very sarcastic tone to him. Why, yes, your majesty, we did throw three in there. Like, what are you talking about, right? He says, Look, I see four men. I see four men. I see four men unbound walking around in the fire, unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the furnace. He shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come out here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them, not a hair on their heads. Oh, yeah. 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 Their clothing was not scorched. Yeah. They didn't even smell of smoke. Yeah. 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 I mentioned this to our church on Sunday night. I'm going to say it again right here. The Bible does not tell us that those three men saw that fourth man walking around. Oh, right. Right. Oh, they didn't know. Right. We don't know if they knew, but it doesn't tell us that they knew. Right. Right. So if they didn't even see that person walking around with them. A lot of scholars believe it was Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
They didn't even see Jesus walking with them, but he was there with them. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. You know what I the song that you teenagers sang this evening. Amen. I am not alone. That's right. That's right. The fire that you are going to walk through. Yeah. 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 The fire that you are going to go through. running after you. Praise the Lord. Guts 
to say, I need help. It takes guts to say, I can't do this on my own. It takes more guts to follow through. To come to fight through the end. It's a battle. We're in a spiritual warfare. The devil wants nothing more than to take you out. And if he can start with something that you think is going to fix it, you'll lose. He'll win, you lose. No one wins with addiction. Nobody. What does the word say? The devil roams around seeking. Who can I get today? Who can I get today? Who's weak? Who feels like they want to take their life? Who feels like they can't do it no more? That's who I'm going to mess with. He'll mess with your mind, and then he'll attack the rest. We do a, we do a class that's called Battlefield of the Mind. Because our mind is always in a battlefield. And if he can mess with your head to make you think that nobody loves you, that you don't matter, he tried to do that to me. You don't matter. They don't love you. And if he can do that to make you feel like you don't matter, just to end it, he wins. We have to take a stand. You have to take a stand. At the youngest of age, I talked to a girl yesterday and interviewed her. She started using at the age of five because one of her family members said, you do this, don't tell, it will be all right. At the age of five, that girl ended up, she is 40 years old. We're trying to rescue her. Yes. We're trying to rescue today. Yes. And she is 40 years old and has lived a life of hell with drugs and alcohol and prostitution. Yes. Yes. Has eight children. Yes. Don't know who daddy is. That's the life that the devil wants you to have. Yes. Not God. God has a plan for you. A plan for you to prosper. He has a plan for you to be successful. He has a plan for you to be something great in Him. He has a plan. He says, because I know I have a plan for you. He has a plan for you. It's not the enemy. If there's anything negative coming in your thought process, let me... Reassure you, it's not God. That's right. right. That's what the devil says. Don't let him win. You don't have time. You don't have time today. Today's the day. That's right. Jesus' brother said, today's the day. You don't have time to mess around. You're not, we are not promised one breath from now. You can walk out the door and get in a vehicle tomorrow and go home and end up in a crash and die. Where are you going? It's heaven or hell at the end of the day. It's not you and your friends. It's not you and your family. When you stand before God, guess what? It's you. Not you and anybody else. This is real stuff. Addiction is real. Dying and going to hell is real. Don't waste your time, guys. God loves you more than anything. He'll love you when no one else will. I stand here today, proof of that, when I felt like nobody loved me. I knew God did. Just a few years ago, I had to write my story to share because I was part of Celebrate Recovery. And I asked myself, why are you still standing here with God? And what came to me so clear is because I knew God loved me when nobody else did. When I walked in the church door, something was different. When I walked in the presence of God, something was different. I felt I didn't matter. But you know what God says? He is the only thing that matters. What they think about you doesn't matter. 
What God thinks is what matters. Yeah. And when we really get a hold of that, it'll change some things. Yeah. Quit trying to please your friends. Yeah. Your friends aren't going to stand beside you when you stand before God. Right. You get thrown in jail, guess what? Your friends will have nothing to do with you. They aren't going to put money on your books to help you get commissary and call your mom or dad or anybody. They're not going to be there. It's real stuff, guys. Go to juvenile hall. It's real stuff. A lot of bad things happen in juvenile hall. A lot of bad things happen in jail and prisons. I got a lot more I can say, but we're going to hold it. But I brought Heather up because Heather came through the House of Grace in my first group of girls that came in over five years ago. <laughs> cigarettes and thought I was a grown adult. So you know what they told me? They said, it's okay to smoke weed with your mom and then drink with your dad. So I did that. And so I was tired of being abused and I ran, I ran away to my grandma's. When I ran away to my grandma's, I ended up getting pregnant with my daughter. Then I had a daughter at 16 years old. Then after that, I had a son at 20 and then I got cancer at 21. The next thing you know, I was taught a long time ago how to feed my addictions with the wrong thing instead of listening.
listening to the preacher next door tell me that Jesus loves you. Yes. 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 Jesus loves every one of you and he's chasing you. The devil was chasing me too, but when I didn't see it, I just wanted to be loved. I wanted to be loved. The flesh. Loved. Not the spirit, the flesh. Oh, you allow the devil to touch the flesh. He goes inside and he wants to take everything with him and take you straight to hell. That's what he wants to do. Yeah. And then not just that, you don't realize that you're dragging your little sisters and your brothers with you. Do you guys know that? Do you know that? That when you guys hit the joint, or when you guys snort the line, or when you guys pop the pill or the coke, and you think it's cool, and you listen to them songs, and you let the devil in, and Jesus' name, the devil's coming through our music, trying to take our lives. He's coming to our music, and he's trying to take our babies. And I'm telling you what, in Jesus' name, I'm standing up and I'm fighting. Yes! going to jail for methamphetamines. I went to jail several times. I was in and out of psychiatric units. I used for 20 years. I used from 13 to 33 and God came to me and he told me. He came to me and he told me, he said, I will set you free from all of your addictions and all of your obsessions if you come and you serve me. And then not just that. I, so I stepped out and I said, all right, I tried dying. I tried dying. I couldn't die. I tried to die. I ended up on a ventilator twice. Couldn't breathe on my own one time for two weeks and one time for eight days. And you know what? I seen God then too, but you know what else I seen? I seen black. All oh black. It was him. I was going to hell is where I was going. And then God told me, he said, you come and serve me and I'll set you free. So I did. I thought I tried dying. So let's go try to see if this God is real. Let's go see if he's real. So I did. And then I'm there. God sent me on a mission. I didn't know I was on an assignment the entire time. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that God was going to send me on an assignment. Oh, so I want you to know that this is what happened. Yeah, the yeah. power grew within me real, real slow. That's what it did. Real, real slow, the power started to grow. Just like in Acts 3, when uh, John and Peter were walking down the road, and then all of a sudden they seen the lame man at the beautiful mountain, where that was right there. Okay, well then all of a sudden the lame man said, he wanted to change. He says, I have nothing for you. He said, I have no silver and I have no gold. He what? said, stand up and walk. He yeah. said, stand up and walk. Yeah. And he walked. He did. And, I, and, the, yeah. and the power grew. Yeah. And then the power grew and he walked. He yeah. walked. Amen. We can do that too. Your parents can do that too. Amen. You guys think that your parents are stuck in this. I know there's got to be kids with parents stuck in this. Got to be kids with parents stuck deep in this. You can pray your, your parents out. You can go to Jesus and tell them, Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my life, Lord. And now I'm going to break generational curses that have been placed on my family. I let them there, and now I'm going to come and lead them out. I let them come and lead them out, whether you let them there or not, buddy. You go on and you see Jesus, the one that can set him free. You can go back to your family. God will set them free one way or another. One way or another. Now, I used to be a needle using junkie. You know what I am today? Come on. I am a child of God. Yeah.
Addiction is real, people. Right. If you are someone, and if you're an adult and you think it's not true and not real, come on, let's talk. Let me show you some things. Let me tell you some stories. Let me take you on a visit to the jail and talk to someone that's trying to come out of it. Just sit and talk with one of my girls. They'll share. It's real. It may not be hitting your family. Give it time. It's worse today than ever before. It's worse today. But it's real. Our young people need your prayers. Darkness is in their face. Darkness is in your face. You pray. You rebuke. And you run as fast as you can to the face of Jesus. And you will win. Amen. Amen.
and I prayed for a week, and um, she finally quit smoking and stuff from after she had the blood clots, and um, she was in the hospital for almost a week, and finally she's starting to do a lot better than what she was. And she went after a few days ago, and the blood clots are completely gone. <laughs> Thank you. 
I respect a person. He doesn't care how young you are, how old you are. He is a coward.
to pursue vulnerability in your church. Yeah, I yes. go. Yeah. Brother Zeke, you got a story. Uh-huh. These babies need to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. God gave you that story yeah. because somebody needs it. And the story that you're going to share will pull somebody out of the pits of hell and out of the grass yeah. of Satan. Yeah. I don't care who you are. I don't care how far you come. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what the devil has tried to do to destroy you. Your story matters. Somebody needs to hear. Now, your story may not be for everybody. There will be people you don't tell it to because they will use it against you. And I'm afraid to say sometimes it's in the church. But pastors, be that safe person. Be that person that they can come to and can call in the middle of the night and say, Pastor, I don't have anybody else. I need you. I'm struggling and I don't know what to do. Yeah. And I'm just going to be really y'all. I'm sorry. Don't tell them, just pray. Because the devil's giving them 15 steps how to get in trouble. They need more than just pray. They need you telling them, this is how you get out of it. Let me tell you what God's done for me. I was healed before the Lord has done it. by grace. Right, right. So you've been through something and someone needs to hear it. Yes. Yes. But our teens in church need to come in and feel like they're important. Like they're supposed to yes. be there. Yes. What they have to say is important. Right. They need to be able to share their story. They need to be able to talk to a pastor. Yeah. Yep. They need somebody to counsel them. Yeah. To yeah. give them strategies on how to exit the situation they're right. in. The right. addiction they're in. Yeah. Some of them I've heard stories of 12 years old. I've heard a story of a mother shooting up her five-year-old. They didn't ask why they had no clue what was going on. Our churches are full of broken people who are afraid to say anything. Because there has been such a stigma in the church around mental health and addictions. Pastors, parents, Church members, we've got to be different. We've got to do different. Yeah. Yeah. We want to see our pews full. We want to see people on fire for God. Yeah. We cannot continue to do the same thing we've always done and expect something different. Yeah. If you want to see your church full of blood bought, sold out saints, it starts with you. Yeah. It starts with saying, you know what? I can't get mad at you for doing something I've never discipled you to do. Right, right. So how about instead of me getting mad at you, I take you under my wing and I show you something different. Because you may not have anybody else in your family living for the Lord. But I can be there for you. I can be a safe person. I can be free. That's God's job. None of us hung on a cross for anybody in our church. So we don't have a place of self-righteousness. We check that at the door and at the altar. Yeah. But we say, you know what? But for the grace of God, you know where I'd be? Amen. You know where I was? Come on. And God delivered me. Yes. Married couples, it's taking that time to say, you know what? My marriage hasn't been a better process. And I've been through some things. And we went through some counseling. Mm-hmm. And we went through some tough times. Yeah. But God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll close with this. Your survival story, or the story of how you made it out, is going to be somebody else's survival guide. Yeah. They'll never make it out if you don't give it to them. A survival guide does no good if you don't read it. You can be in the woods with a backpack full of survival gear. If you don't know how to use it, you're still going to die. So, pastors, parents, Church members, yeah. youth pastors, yeah. Yeah. I urge you, yes. don't keep what you've got. Expect them just to figure it out on their own. Come on. If you want the pews full, if you want to see those souls saved, let's do something different.
At the beginning of fourth grade, I was bullied by this one boy who said I was fat, that I was dumb, and and one day he said that I shouldn't eat for a week and that I should slow down on gluten. And I stood up to him. I I told him that I wasn't gonna let him steal my joy. Mm -hmm. and, and he hasn't bullied me ever since I said that. There you go. <laughs>
dismiss. Uh, just don't go bombard the grill with them people. Uh, Casey's getting everything fired up and get everything ready. Uh, those that are in dress clothes, please go ahead and change your clothes. Uh, you don't want to see those get messy or dirty. I'm sure your parents don't. Uh, uh, great one. Go ahead and dismiss us in prayer. We thank you for the service. Thanks for touching everybody that you did tonight. We hope we welcome back tomorrow. Uh, ready for another good service. In your name.